Hello again, everybody. Welcome to the final uh, video in our factoring polynomial series. Today, we're going to look at factoring all types. Before we get into the factoring, I want to give you or I want to show you um, this little flowchart that I've made up, just so it can help kind of train your brain on how to think through this situation. So where we begin is up here with a polynomial. So you're going to look at your polynomial. Uh, then you're going to ask yourself, I guess this is the first question, is there a greatest common factor? Remember, I was trying to get you into that habit of always looking for a greatest common factor first. If there is a greatest common factor, go ahead and remove it. Then move on to the next question. If there is not a greatest common factor, simply move on to the next question. Next question, how many terms? And then once you know how many terms, then you know the method. So if there's two terms, we'll use difference of squares. If there is four terms, we'll use grouping. If there's three terms and they're of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, then we, did, then we check out is the a value one or not. If the a value is one, I recommend using the pattern, but if you go back to that video, I showed you a couple different ways you could do it. And if a does not equal one, I recommend using decomposition. But once again, if you go back to that video, you'll see that I showed you a couple different methods as well. So just a reminder, you need to be good at one of the methods. Um, you don't need to be good at every method I've ever shown you because I like to show you a variety and then hopefully you latch on to one of them. Okay, so I'm going to keep referencing this chart. If you want to pause the video and write this down yourself, go for it. But I'm going to keep referencing this chart as we move forth through the examples. All right, our first example. Um, remember the chart. So the chart says, uh, is our greatest common factor? So if we check out this first example, a 2g squared plus 20g plus 32, there is. It's a 2. So I'm going to pull out this 2, and then you'll see what I'm left with. And again, now we always focus on what we're left with. Um, and I, the second question in that chart is how many terms? There's three terms in that g squared plus 20g plus 16, and it's from of the proper form. So now I need to know the a value, and the a value would be 1. It'd be 1g squared. So then I'm going to use that pattern. Now, for the pattern, remember it's factors of c that add to b. Okay, so c ends up being 16, b ends up being 10. So factors of 16 that add to 10, 8 and 2 would fit both of those. So then it's going to be uh, the 2, the, the greatest common factor I carried along, g plus 8, and then g plus 2. You could have wrote the g plus 2 first if you wanted to, um, but this is the order I chose. And there we go. That's my answer. Example 1a, done. Example b. Same first step. Is our greatest common factor? And once again, there is one. There's an m. Uh, what am I left with? m squared minus 25. Okay, now check out the bracket to see if it can do anything else. Well, the second question, how many terms? There are two terms. Okay, so then the only method left would be difference of squares. If it's not difference of squares, that means I can't factor any further. And then this right here would be my answer. Okay, so if you can't go any further and you factored it just a little bit, that's fine. Sometimes in poly with polynomials, you can only factor it a little bit. But now back to my example here, m squared minus 25. So if you're not sure, remember we can use our little middle step. I can go something squared minus something squared. And what times itself would equal m squared? Well, m by itself times itself would equal m squared. And then what times itself equals 25? Well, 5 would. So that proves me it is a difference of squares. And then I can move forward. So my GCF, I rewrite. And then I get m minus 5, m plus 5. All right, hopefully we're good so far. The third example, first part again, or first question, is there a greatest common factor? And if I examine this 9c squared minus 12c plus 4, and think about it, I can't find anything that's common there. So I just move on to the second step, which is how many terms? Well, there's three terms. So then what is the a value? Well, the a value in this one ends up being 9. So then the method I recommend then would be decomposition. All right, so for decomposition, you'll have to remember our uh, little setup there as well. It is factors of a times c that add to b. 
Okay, so what are some factors of a times c? Well, first of all, a times c would be 9 times 4, so 36, that add to negative 12. Factors of 36 that add to negative 12. All right, so uh, negative 6 times negative 6 would give me a uh, positive 36, but negative 6 plus a negative 6 would give me negative 12. Uh, when I add them up. So those will be my magic numbers. So again, remember I'm using decomposition. So that means I'm going to decompose the middle term. So negative 12c is going to turn into negative 6c minus negative 6c plus 4. Once we've done the decomposition step, it just turns into grouping. Remember, here's my imaginary line. And I look to start pulling out greatest common factors. So the greatest common factor from the left half would be 3c. Uh, 3c minus 2 would be left over. And the greatest common factor on the right half now, I'm going to write it as uh, negative 2, which would then leave me as uh, leave me with 3c minus 2 as my binomial. And again, if you haven't done it for a bit, my brackets are matching, so I know that I'm on the right track with grouping. So I pull that out, 3c minus 2. And once I factor it out, then I just gather the leftovers. 3c minus 2, and I, I end up having the same binomial twice in my answer, which means this trinomial is actually kind of a special trinomial. It's a trinomial square, something we didn't look at in this chapter, um, but it's not a technique you actually need because decomposition will handle it just fine. So that's example C. Example D. Um, again, uh, I'm going to go for greatest common factor. So it looks like 2a squared would be my greatest common factor. Um, if I divide out my 2a squared, I'd be left with a minus 1. Okay, we know the routine. We're going to check out the bracket. So my next step is how many terms? There are two terms. And the only technique I could use is difference of squares. Okay, so again, I'm going to use that middle step because it doesn't take much to use that middle step. So something squared minus something squared. What times itself would give you a? Well, nothing. Nothing times itself is going to give you A, meaning this is my final answer right here. That doesn't mean this polynomial is prime, by the way. It just means I didn't do a lot. So some people think if you can't, um, if you can't move forward, it's prime. No, as soon as I factor out the 2A squared, now it's not prime. Um, it's just I wasn't able to do a bunch of factoring. So that's absolutely fine. Sometimes you can only pull out, pull out a GCF. It's not always a GCF and then another technique after it. Um, that's everything I have for you guys in this final topic. Uh, it's a shorter video, but really it's just all about that chart and training your brain how to think through these questions. If you need some more help with it, make sure you talk to a teacher or come find myself. Good luck, everyone.